where do I see competition from A and AI, or how how do I see AI affecting competition in the music business? The 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 first place I really realized that it was going to be an issue is when I started hearing my film score friends talking about it. Uh, basically, you know, if you watch a film, sometimes there's a popular song, like a Rolling Stones song in there, but there's all this other incidental music. That's usually, you call that film cues or whatever, or cues. And that, you know, often orchestral or it seems orchestral, it's using synthesizer and stuff like that. They began complaining that essentially they felt that their cues were being scraped or you know, taken in to some of these music generating AIs and stuff like that. And then being spit back out in sort of a different form. And then essentially bad actors were licensing this music to their very own clients who they'd worked for, right? Kind of sort of an unfair competition thing, right? Um, also outside of the music business, I know a lot, a lot of graphic artists that were having a problems where you know suddenly the local club, nightclub or theater wasn't hiring them to make a poster. They were going to some AI image generator and say, make me a poster in the style of insert artist's name, and they were finding that they were, uh, you know, being unfairly competed with, subject to unfair competition, I guess, by uh, people sort of using AI in ways that are not fair. Another place we see AI coming into the music business is with sort of the fake voices, you know, you know people will create a uh, a facsimile voice of somebody like Tupac or uh, Tupac or um, Prince or somebody like that and then use it to put out new songs that are essentially um, you know in the style of that artist or using the voice of that artist and stuff like that and these would you know um, a lot of estates of deceased musicians and stuff like that are quite upset about that Music has often been licensed and used for other purposes, you know. Um, s people will sample snippets of songs and then go and like make new songs out of them and stuff like that. Um, generally, the way that's been done in the past um, is that, uh, you know, usually um, somebody wants to use, sample somebody works for a new song. Uh, what they'll do is they'll contact the, you know, the performer and the songwriters and perhaps the record label, sometimes the producer, and get permission from all of those, the, all of those individuals involved in it. Um, either they come up with some fee or they decide that this is a new work and we're all going to own a portion of it and any royalties and licensing that flow from that. So usually it's, you know, it's very property rights based approach, you know, it's like you may split the ownership of the new work that's created from that. In the past when we've had cases where you know there's some sort of user like a radio station or a bar or a concert venue that's going to have wants to use a lot of different songwriters and performer songs and stuff like that we've come up with these uh, collective licensing schemes there's a, there's a couple of them there's you, people might be familiar with BMI ASCAP and CSAC they issue public performance licenses to bars and stuff like that and um, there's also what are called compulsory licenses that allow like other bands to m make covers of songs and in a way streaming services also actually do that. Those systems generally work well, but in, s in certain specific cases like, you know, you have a bunch of small bars, restaurants, gas stations, shops and stuff like that, like a bunch of small businesses on one side of the table and you have a bunch of, you know, songwriters, you know, which are essentially little small businesses on the other side of the table. And they sort of have the same sort of negotiating power, the same economic size. And what they can do is just get a license from a collective licensing organization for every song on this side of the table, right? They get 
one license and they get all these songs, right? These, those tend to have historically have worked really well. The problem with AI is that these are going to be really big companies making AI. I mean, even if there's fairly robust competition and there's five dozen of them or something like that, these are, it's a, it requires a lot of technology, a lot of money, a lot of computing power, a lot of water. These are going to be really big companies, right? And that's not the best place for collective licensing because, uh, you know, there's a power imbalance on either side of the table. And uh, when the negotiation comes for the licenses, one side has a lot of resources and the songwriters on the other side don't. Now, however, I think you'll find that many songwriters, maybe those film cue people might be like, well, you know, I'm kind of retired now or something like that. Take all my film cues and we can have a film cue AI and I'll, I'll you know, a bunch of, maybe a, a bunch of composers decide that that's you know, kind of want to how they want to monetize their work for the rest of their life, and they enter into voluntary voluntary blanket licenses. I could see that coming about, and having a lot of people on both sides of the negotiation, the AIs and the composers, being happy with that. But I think it's important that it has to be uh, voluntary, right? So I think one thing that um, the antitrust division. Uh, uh, the DOJ could do. I think uh, in making it sort of clear that the law is not settled on these companies just massively ingesting our copyrights and that, you know, there's a unfair competition argument there. Um, would probably m make some of these companies think twice about, you know, essentially ingesting our work and then using it to outputting essentially derivative works that come back and compete with us, right? I think uh, the, the antitrust division could, like, just you know, sort of make it clear that we're looking at this. We're, we're, we're going to keep an eye on this. We want to make sure that, you know, you guys are playing by the rules, you know. Um, uh, I, I do think that, uh, it, I mean, it is new. We've never seen anything like this before. We just never really had the computer processing power for things like this to sort of happen. So I mean, in a way, there's no roadmap, but I think a, a watchful eye um, would be very helpful to musicians.